What a week to talk about high yields in particular because you're seeing people really put on more of that risk appetite after that expectation for rate cuts. The search for yields, Mike, how far does it go? <laughs> it's a great question. And I think with spreads being, you know, certainly for double Bs and single B rated credit are, you know, approaching all time tights um, and, and in some cases through them. I think investors are looking at more than just a spread metric to sort of evaluate high yield. Um, I think as, as maybe some of the previous comments had highlighted, you know, duration is quite short in the high yield bond market relative to historical levels. Prices are at discounts. And so every time there's sort of any sort of backup in, in macroeconomic uh, data or what have you, you know, there's buyers that step in pre pretty easily. Um, but there are stresses out there in the lower end of the market and certainly want to be you know, cognizant of those. And um, you know, our general expectation is the, the triple C's and some of the lower rated and lower distressed names in, in leveraged loan land will struggle to rally in this market just because fundamentals aren't going to support them really rallying. Right. If you look at how much money has been pouring in, Andrea, do you think that the returns are really justifying what you're getting for the risk that you're taking on, especially where spreads have been lately? No, I, I think he's hitting the nail on the head here. When you think about the backdrop that's really played towards those lower quality uh, securities outperforming, it's been a low volatility backdrop. Now, that is still consistently the case across most asset classes, but where are we seeing vol pick up? The currency market, the rate market, as we've sort of shifted the narrative from concerns about inflation towards concerns about growth. And that certainly will disrupt the return profile of those lower quality tiers of the leveraged loan market as well as the high yield market. Well, let's go into some of those riskier parts. I think leveraged loans, Andrea, is one of the more exciting parts of the market right now because you feel issuers just coming to market for all sorts of different reasons. You see the banks pushing it too, but are there buyers on the other end? So far to date, there certainly have been buyers, but I think as we start to see perhaps more than one as the Fed, uh, more than one cut as the Fed has, has put out in the marketplace as of this week, the market's already pricing in two cuts. Should we get more concerned about growth and start to see three cuts potentially priced in, I think you'll start to see investors move towards the door in that floating rate market for duration assets at that point. Now, it's interesting, Mike, you alluded to troubles brewing under the surface in some areas. Where are you seeing those stresses starting to materialize? And where are you watching for more stresses to come to the surface in the future? Yeah, I'll, I'll tackle the first one, which is where are we seeing them right now? Right now, we are generally speaking seeing stresses come up in less cyclical sectors than, than people are expecting. And the reason for that is in, in most cases, Cable media, telecom tends to be the really hot sector for, for distresses and default type, type scenarios right now. And what investors are seeing in those credits, fundamentally, they're not able to grow at a really fast clip right now. And by the way, as, as it's been alluded to, interest costs rising for them are really eroding free cash flow. So as they sort of tackle a changing media, a changing technology, um, and a tech changing cable backdrop, they're having a much harder time dealing with those stresses and fundamentals are deteriorating there. Where do you worry now, the, the question, most? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I was going to say the what we're looking for is where are the new stresses going to emerge? So those names are already trading in some of those sectors quite wide. If you exclude them from the high yield bond market spreads, for example, you can generally speaking subtract 30 or 40 basis points off of the, the OAS of the benchmark if you want to. And so it's priced in largely, I think, in that sector already. But new sectors that we're getting, I think, concerns about or looking for concerns about are things that are generally speaking consumer driven because as you as as obviously all the data is showing, you know, inflation is still running pretty hot. Um, the lower end consumer is eventually going to have problems where they're not going to be able to uh, to to you know continue to spend at the levels they have. And so we're we're looking for more stresses in those types of sectors right now. Now, the consumer point is a great one. I think, Andrea, a lot of people have a lot of concerns about anything that is consumer sensitive, particularly to lower and middle income consumers. How big of a ripple effect is there here in that consumer sentiment weakening, as you saw from the University of Michigan data today? Where do you think those uh, concerns will start to ripple into credit markets? Well, I, I definitely think it's the probably top priority to be, to be watching the consumer. Now, what we're watching very closely is that unemployment rate. 
as we've already seen it tick up a bit, if we start to see it grind closer to 4.2%, that's really going to hit more than just the middle to low income consumer, but they are not the individuals driving uh, consumer spending in the US economy. It tends to be the top of that income distribution. Once you start to approach that 4.2% unemployment rate, I, it's, it's expected to start to see those upper income consumers change their spending profiles, grow more concerned about their own job outlooks, and that might be the catalyst to start to see high yield, leveraged loan markets really begin to underperform as we believe that bid is going to go very quickly back towards the traditional safe haven of more duration, higher quality. And that tends to be the portfolio that works as you are this phase of end of cycle. Now, what do you think, Mike, is the best opportunity out there? You're putting new money to work tomorrow. Where do you put it? Yeah, we're, right now, I think where we're putting new money to work is in two, a mixture of two things. On the high yield bond side, we're continuing to favor shorter duration yield to call or yield to event types of, 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 um, of bonds because we're not trying to introduce new risk into portfolios to under point, you know, just a second ago that the you know, economy could roll over. And, and I think some of those sectors could be disadvantageously, you know, underperforming, so to speak. On the leverage loan side, we are specifically up in quality. Um, and I mean up in quality in terms of the higher single B portion of the market. We are avoiding, generally speaking, adding new risk to the portfolio in distressed and discounted names. There aren't that many discounted names really in the loan market right now at all. But overall, we're sort of, I think, more or less positioning up in quality in, in that sector and um, in businesses and in sectors mm -hmm. that are really stable and, and mm -hmm. industrials, chemicals, some of those sectors are where we're finding just better opportunities overall than mm -hmm. away from consumer, media, telecom, those things. Andrea, about 30 seconds left here. Favorite trade? Sure. I, I think the sweet spot right now, given the current backdrop, is really that triple B to double B space across investment grade and high yield markets. Mike just hit the nail on the head thinking about where to be positioned in the leveraged loan market. We also like up in quality, but we would begin to pare back some of our floating rate exposure in our portfolios in favor for more duration sensitive exposure. But I think in the triple B space, you're able to find some bonds trading at discounts where you have that convexity at your favor should we start pricing in more cuts from here.